are there any other red flags that maybe you guys can give this room some information that says, hey, if you get one of these, maybe do a little research. Um, can you speak to the method of how that is determined for in-house calibrations for retailers? The third party is often able to do it the same day or the dealer sometimes a week out for recalls. What would you recommend or help? Today was all about calibration, including a lot of questions. Stick around for a few quick answers. Welcome back to Indy, where the quickest way to draw a crowd is with anything calibration related. I'm Tara Taffer, and we're at Autoglass Week, where everyone is hungry for information. It was standing room only as an expert panel fielded questions, and they just kept coming. How do you find out whether something's going to be a major hassle before you even start on it? Is there anything that you can give us a little advice? We're going through the same thing. I know you're running into issues. I know you're running into problems like, well, someone else has had to run into this. We, we get the same. It, it's just going to happen. As these cars get older, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen more. Because none of this has has really been tested over time. Well, all of us that, are, that, that do this have this same story. The dealers are, are either uh, not informed, uh, they don't pay attention to their own literature, but uh, I've experienced it firsthand myself where the dealer thinks if nothing comes up in the scan, it doesn't need to be recalibrated. After the panel, the calibration sessions kept going. Bob Ronick of AGSC talked about the aspects of calibration that appear in the AGSC standard. Then Paul McFarland from Lynx shared some statistics that prove just how much this segment is growing. Look for those in my story on glassbites.com. When we stepped on the show floor, what was happening? You guessed it, calibration demos, of course, from Aztec and Pilkington. Attendees flooded the area to see them in action and to ask questions. Here we just want to see how they work. We're trying to watch all the demonstrations and uh, see which system we like and how they work. We're going to start with the back side. And these are the step-by-step -step instructions that we read so that we can see how... From the sales standpoint and the operations standpoint, it's going to make our sales team feel more comfortable because a lot of companies are already doing calibrations and they're moving that direction so it gives them you know to be able to answer that and say hey we're doing that as well you know locally so. okay okay yes there are other things happening here at the show including some new tools to look at so let's check in with a couple of our sponsors who are showcasing one is for windshield repair and the other for replacement both can be lifesavers so we've spent the last couple of years designing a brand new way to deal with scratches and glass because we recognize that uh, scratch glass happens, everybody has to deal with it in our industry, but we wanted to come up with a way that would be super fast and super easy, but that would also guarantee that you know you wouldn't have distortion in the glass, because that's an unacceptable thing on a windshield, which is a safety feature. So um, two and a half years worth of R&D and development, we came up with the G-Force Max. And the G-Force Max is a handheld uh, glass scratch removal tool that's fully ambidextrous and it has a built-in water feed system right into the handle. Super, super easy to use. That's the biggest thing about this tool. All, we've, all we gotta do is we've applied a little bit of compound into the pores of the disc and then the water feed system is all connected. The bottle's over here in the background and the bottle will connect to the glass or on your hip and then we'll just start it up and we're gonna re just go right over the scratch for a couple minutes. And we just clean it up, and you can look at that. The scratch is completely gone. This will help a technician lift the glass, especially in vehicles where windshields are a little large. And so it helps them set the windshield in place. We're gonna raise the glass, disconnect, and we're gonna raise this to go over the hood of a vehicle, and we're gonna go around the vehicle, and we're gonna bring it right over to the area of the glass and we're going to go ahead and maneuver it so this way there is no strain on the on the vehicle of the of the vehicle or the person that is installing this windshield or maybe a back glass or a roof panel these are the things that are going to help technicians get this and not hurt themselves when there's maybe a one-man installation 
I can't even begin to convey how much great info was shared here today, and we're not even done yet. Stay tuned to GlassBytes.com for more news and videos from Indy, where there's no time for pit stops.